Hi guys, welcome back. Dr. Sam here, helping you get closer to great skin. So today, I wanted to show you how I apply my retinoid and give you some sneaky insider tips to getting the most out of this essential skincare ingredient. Let's get started. So it's nighttime, which is when I always use a retinoid and I'm cleansed. Now, what I do next will depend for you guys on where you're at with your retinoid. So let's consider scenario one. You've never used one before. This is your first time and you're feeling a little bit nervous, maybe. Um, I know there's a lot of you who experience anxiety when they think about retinoids and we know this from our Facebook group when we did a little survey. So the way I suggest you going gently um, is to first think about moisturizing before you do your retinoid. It's called buffering. And I think that there is absolutely no harm in starting in a way that does almost nothing because I think it's through regular usage you build confidence. And if you remember, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, it's about the long term. There's no rush to do everything immediately. So I would start off with moisturizing after cleansing, and I'm gonna use um, Dr. Sam Scholar's moisturizer because it contains niacinamide. The reason for including niacinamide in my moisturizer was to help those starting retinoids because niacinamide is a great ingredient for helping you reduce the irritancy of retinoids uh, because it increases ceramide content in the skin, making your barrier that little bit more robust. So I'm gonna moisturize all over. I'm gonna use two pumps, 13 dot technique, as you guys know. And what's really important here is that I take care of areas that might be extra prone to irritancy. Now today, I'm not gonna do my neck into collotage. I consider that advanced level retinoid use and my patients will know that. So what is key when you're starting is that you get confidence. So let's just focus on the thicker, more tolerant areas of the face in the first instance. So I've done my 13 dots, I'm gonna rub it in. And what's really key is that I barrier off areas that are prone to trouble. So that means the thin skin around the eyes. It means collecting in crevices. Now, if any of you have little lines or wrinkles, nasal labial marionette lines, you wanna be very careful because you don't want product to accumulate and even the tiniest amount extra of your retinoid sitting in those creases overnight can make you more prone to redness and irritancy. So as I said, I'm not paying attention to my neck today, I'm just doing my face. Now, if I was extra cautious and maybe naturally prone to dry skin around my eyes anyway, I would do an extra bit of moisturizer around my eyes. It's what I call moisturizer goggles, which probably sounds slightly absurd, but that means you're more likely to remember it. And I will literally have moisturizers sitting on the surface because the thing is, no matter how precisely you apply your retinoid, products tend to creep. And that means that when you're lying in your pillow and maybe you're smushing your face, you know, shouldn't lie on your side, but if you do, it can just encourage product to track a little bit into that thinner inner part of the eye. And the other thing is sometimes you just accidentally swipe the eye area when you're applying the retinoid and you get retinoid on your eyelids and it makes things dry and peely or else just a bit drier underneath which makes your wrinkles look worse and then you start to worry that actually the retinoid is doing more harm than good. So moisturizer goggles if you're really worried about your eye area, moisturizer all over and if you have you know a little bit of extra moisturizer I put it in the creases of the nose another area where product can tend to settle and irritate. Check out those little areas where fine lines and wrinkles might be and then let it all soak in. Give yourself a good five to 10 minutes before you come back to do your retinoid step. And then the final step is anyone who's used a retinoid before knows that lips are prone to dryness if you get retinoids on them. So I always put lip balm on as a barrier. You're essentially protecting the orifices, which isn't a very nice term. <laughs> but it's very important, particularly at the creases, and some people are naturally just prone to having some fine lines there, and again, it's not a nice place to have retinoids collect because it will cause dryness and irritation. Okay, so that's me prepped and ready to apply my retinoid. Now, 
I don't want you to get too caught up in my choice of retinoid today. Um, I'm doing a separate video on what retinoid is right for you and going through all the different ones, but I'm gonna use this one today because it comes in a nice pump format. So what I think is key when you're starting a retinoid is to do less often and smaller amounts building up to bigger amounts more often as tolerance develops. And that's a process that happens over the course of weeks two months. So for the average patient I'm seeing for the first time, I tend to start them on every other day and I use a quantity, what I call a half fingertip amount, which is essentially like that. So half the distance from the crease to the end of the finger, okay? It's approximately a pea-sized amount if you want to use that sort of terminology and it's around a quarter of a gram of product. Over time, as they get more tolerant and are able to use the product daily, I'll build up to a fingertip amount, which is around half a gram. So pumps are easy. I mean, there are other products, of course, on the market, like the Ordinary's Grand Active Retinoid that comes in a serum format. I find droppers are a little harder to quantify the amount that you're using, and I do prefer a cream because then again, it's easier to distribute in a precise fashion. Serums are more liquid and that can lead to more, um, you know, potential spread onto areas that you don't want to treat. So I'm going to do my 13 dot technique again, and I won't show you anything to do with eyes or necks today because I think that those are areas that as I say I call high high risk in a way but advanced level retinoid use of course there are areas that we want to treat because we want thicker skin we want skin that's more resistant to wrinkling but as I said get used to doing it on thicker parts like cheeks forehead nose and chin first I'm then going to really firmly rub that in. You want to saturate the upper layer of your skin and you want to really work product in. You don't want it sitting on the surface. It's just going to irritate if it's sitting on the surface. What we want is ultimately to get the product into the stratum corneum and then to drip down into the dermis where it can work its magic on collagen production, hyaluronic acid production and so forth. So I'm going to really work it in those areas nice and even because consistency with these things is absolutely key now anyone who's concerned about fine lines in the top lip will of course want to apply their retinoid there but i use a little bit less so i use the majority on these thicker parts and then i work it in carefully to areas like that at the end you do want to work it into your nose because of course it improves the appearance of your pores so a nice firm masses but again I will consciously wipe away the crease area so it's not sitting there and collecting. So final thoughts, that's fully absorbed now um, and it's touch dry, there's no product there for me to move around. Again, if I was super nervous and extra cautious and naturally prone to dry skin or I'd had a bad experience with active products before, I would now put another layer of moisturizer on. It's what I call a moisturizer duvet. So you've got a layer underneath to buffer and you've got a layer over the top to minimize dryness. It's nighttime. Looking a little over dewy isn't going to hurt, you know. You're not worrying about makeup sliding off or anything. And if it gets you extra space to tolerate the retinoid more quickly, then it's a great thing. You have plenty of time over the next few weeks, the next few months to build up the way you use your retinoid to make it stronger, but now is not the time for that. And what's really important is to understand that what happens tomorrow isn't really the time that we worry about. I worry about what might happen in three to five days because that's when retinoid dryness tends to appear. So don't get cocky if you wake up day two and think, oh, I'm completely fine. No, stick to the every other day regime, stick to the generous use of moisturizer before and even after and give yourself a full two weeks of that protocol before deciding, am I gonna be okay, can I escalate, or do I need a bit longer on this same slow track? And it's fine to be that person, okay? So that's pretty much it. That's how I approach it, that's how I would start. Um, with time, you can build up the frequency and the quantity, so you can go from every other night to every night half a fingertip to a fingertip amount. And then when you're ready, and that's usually after three months, six months, that sort of time frame, you can think about increasing the strength too if you like what you see and you want to get even more results. 
Really enjoyed doing this video for you guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.